So we've added z-score and percentile to our measures of data, and we have measures of location, like the five number summary and the mean. And we also have measures of spread, which include IQR, standard deviation, and technically the range as well. So all three of those are spread. I'm not going to talk so much about the range because our measures of spread tend to be more standard deviation or IQR, and more frequently standard deviation. So what we're going to look at is what is the impact of transforming the data? That means doing mathematical operations on it. So I've gone ahead and I got this uh, list of football players, senior football players on the 2017 Texas A&M roster. And here are their weights. And I went ahead and converted it to kilograms. Then after that, I went ahead and said, oh, each player gained 10 kilograms. And then I converted it back to pounds. So the main point of this exercise is we're going to look at the statistics for each of these sets of data after I do some sort of math operation. So to convert, I'm going to multiply by 0.454, because one pound is 0.454. If each player, and that's going to be 91.7 kilograms. If each player then adds 10 kilograms, or they gain 10 kilograms, then their weight should go up by 10. And then to convert back to pounds, I can divide. So I'm going to show you, by the way, here's a really cool trick you can do on the calculator. You see how I have all the data entered there in list one. And I can actually go into list two if I want to convert, and that's how I got all these values right here. I said take list one and multiply by 0.454. If you go up here where you're in the top, look at that. It multiplied every value by 0.454. Now I can go up here and say take list two and add 10 kilograms. So I add 10, and then I hit enter while I'm in that top row, and it adds 10. Then I'm going to convert back two pounds, but this time I have to divide to go backwards. And so I'll take list three divided by 0.454 and hit enter and I get all my values. So I'm just going to copy these values here into the table. So let me go ahead and get those. All right. So a nice trick you can do on the TI if you have, or any graphing calculator, if you have a long list of data. So um, after that, I went ahead and ran one of our stats from my original list of data. So I have 185 to 3.5, all of these, all right? Now, when I run one of our stats, it doesn't do IQR. So I'm going to have to go ahead and go Q3 minus Q1, and there it is. The percentile for player four, um, I'm going to actually need the data for that. So I'm going to go ahead and go here. Player four is 215 pounds. And I want to count everyone that's at 215 or less. How many data points are at 215 or less? Six of them. So six out of 12 is 50%. So uh, player four is at the 50th percentile. He's technically the median. Um, and then, or right about, I don't, he'd almost, I'd have to go look at the next uh, data point. Uh, the Z score for player four. Well, what we do is we're going to take his weight, 215, minus the mean, find out how far above the mean he is, or below in this case, and then figure out how many standard deviations away that is. So 215 minus uh, the 225.6 over 34.48. His z-score is negative 0.31. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and calculate the statistics for the converted to kilograms weight, and we're going to compare that. And here you go, you can see, just to remind you, we do one var stats. And you can see here's list one, list two, and list three. And I go to calc, one var stats. Make sure you pick the correct list. In this case, I want list two. So I go second list. Make sure I pick two, hit calculate. And there are my one var stats. So you can see the mean and the standard deviation. But first, let's go ahead. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Then. Then let's go ahead and get the, uh, there we go. Let's go ahead and get the five number summary, which is down underneath here. And then I'll go ahead and add that in here and fill it in and then add the standard deviation. So here they are. So these are the numbers I pulled off the calculator. Again, it doesn't do IQR, so I have to go calculate that. Q3 minus Q1, and there it is. It's 18.84. 
Uh, let's go ahead and find the percentile for player six. I mean, sorry, for player four. He's 97.61 kilograms. So I'm going to highlight every point that's that many kilograms or lower. And it's the same six, really, which kind of makes sense. And so his percentile, he's still at the 50 percentile, even though I convert to kilograms. And that kind of makes sense. If we fly the whole team to France where they use kilograms instead of pounds, if my player's at the 50th percentile, I don't expect him to suddenly weigh more or less than the players next to him than he did before. So that one makes sense. Our Z score, by the way, also stays constant. 97.61 is the weight minus my new mean, which is 102.4, and divide by my new standard deviation, 15.65. So these two stay the same. But it looks like everybody else changed when I multiplied by 0.454. So for the fun of it, what I'm going to do is take each one of these values, except the bottom two, and multiply it by 0.454 and compare. Yeah, it's I could have actually shortcutted this whole thing by multiplying all these data, all these statistics by 0.454, whether it was for position or spread, it was affected. The only ones that weren't affected were the standardized scores, percentile and z-score, which are very special percentile, uh, standardized scores. So again, all these values change. They were multiplied by 0.454, except for the standardized scores. All right, now let's go ahead and get our next set of data. So I'm going to run the one bar stats for list three, and I'm just going to fill it in for you. So I, I added 10 pounds to every player. And if you notice, it looks like most of these are going up by 10 pounds. And IQR is going to be Q3 minus Q1, 18.84, which, huh, that looks the same as that. My percentile for my fourth players right here, all the values at or below are 103 point, I mean, um, there are six of them, so he's still at the 50th percentile. Which kind of makes sense because if every player gains 10 kilograms on some special weight gain diet, you don't expect the, you know, the, the six heaviest to suddenly become the eighth heaviest if all, they all gain the same amount. We'll go ahead and calculate his Z score. His weight was 107.61 minus my new mean divided by my standard deviation, and I have the same Z score. So it looks like these guys are never changing on me. Now I'm curious, could I get here, instead of doing one of our stats, could I add 10 to everything? Well, it works there and there and there and there and there, but this one didn't change. So I didn't have to add 10 to IQR. Uh, this one for the mean, I did add 10, but for the standard deviation, it didn't change. So Basically, the ones that didn't change were the measures of spread and, of course, your standardized scores. Your measures of position did change. Okay, so these are the ones that did change right here when I added, and technically it also works to subtract. Um, and then these two uh, didn't change in addition to the standardized below it. So only statistics indicating location but not spread were affected by addition, and that's also true for subtraction. We'll talk about why that is in just a sec. So let me go ahead and do the final uh, column of data where I say, okay, let me go ahead and they went to France, they gain, gained 10 pounds eating delicious French, 10 pounds, 10 kilograms um, eating delicious French food. How much do they weigh when they get back? And we're back in the US and we're measuring in pounds. So to convert, I'm gonna have to divide by 0.454, which I did to the data in the, above it. When I run one of our stats, I get these numbers. Now I'll go ahead and calculate IQR. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the percentile. My fourth player is right here. Anybody at 237 or lower are those. So it's still at the 50th percentile. Not a shock. So percentile doesn't change. What do you think happens with the z-score? You're right. It doesn't change either. So which measures changed when we added or subtracted a constant? Oh, oh, and if you look at it, um, when we divided everything, everything up here did change compared to this, right? Um, now, if you think about it, you go pounds to kilograms, gain some weight, and then go back to pounds. 
technically, it's like every guy went to Europe and they gained 22 pounds, which is about 10 kilograms, by the way. So if I compare the spread here to here, it doesn't change because it was just a shift in the weight gain. Same thing for standard deviation. Um, but the actual position values do change because there was a shift in the weight. So which measures changed when we added or subtracted a constant? The Only the measures of location, five numbers, summary, and mean are usual measures, okay? Um, which ones change when we multiply? Uh, so the spread and the variability, also known as variability, did not change. Which ones change when we multiplied or divided by a constant? Everything except for very special standardized scores like Z scores and percentiles, which never seem to change. That's kind of good, actually. And let's go ahead and take a look at the dot plot. So what I did here is the, here's the original weight of the football players. And then we changed the scale so that their weight is in kilograms. And then, oh no, they ate too much French food. And well, this might be a good thing for football players. And they all gained 10 kilograms. So you can see what happened here is this became like it was multiplied by about half or 0.454. So it kind of shrinks a little bit to go from the pounds to the kilograms. When they gained 20, it's not two, when they gained 20 kilograms, it's like the whole thing shifted. All right, and then when we convert back to pounds, it's like we're multiplying every value in here, so it's more spread out again. So why are the measures of spread only affected when I go either in a, here I was dividing by 0.454. When I went in this direction, I was multiplying by 0.454. Why did that affect the spread? Because if you look at the spread here, it's not any different. Well, when you add or subtract, um, all dots shift. So the distance from this lowest point to this highest point doesn't really change. So my measures of spread don't change when I add or subtract. But when I multiply, that actually changes the scale, either making it smaller or bigger, changing both how the location of you know where my centers are um, and my mins and maxes, but it also changes how far apart my mins and maxes are. Add, subtract does not change where um, the distance between your min and max. It just shifts them, keeping that range the same. So we can generalize this for some rules. If you have a statistical measure and it's you, or you know some data point, and you're multiplying everything by a constant, divide works the same way. You're going to basically multiply by a. If you're dividing by a, guess what? You're going to divide by a. Uh, for measures to spread it still multiplies by A. For special standardized measures like z-score and percentile, no change, all right? When we add, that only changes measures of position. So we would add B to our mean and we would add B to our median. If it was subtract, we'd subtract. For spread, it doesn't change because remember our min and max are still saying they're all just shifting, so the distance between them hasn't changed. And our standardized measures never seem to change. What if I do AX plus B? Well, go in your order of operations. So we're going to multiply first, right? And then add B. That's what we would do for measures of position. For spread, we're only going to multiply by A. Why don't we add by B? Because B doesn't change it. Adding and subtracting doesn't change spread. So the only thing that matters is that we multiplied by A. And of course, our z-score and percentile did not change. So let's go ahead and do an example. We have each of our football players on the team goes to the moon. And I'm just going to use their original weights before their trip to France. And the weight of their spacesuit for each one is 180 pounds. Because the pull of the gravity uh, on the moon is lower, you're going to actually multiply by 0.165, kind of like dividing by 6, roughly. Uh, to get their new weight while they're on the moon. So it's going to be a, a lighter pull. So if we send all the team up to the moon, what would the statistics for their weights be? Well, first of all, we got to suit them up. All right, well, first of all, let's record their original five number summary in me and the original spread. Okay, well, we got to add the weight of the spacesuit, which is 180 pounds, and that's only going to affect measures of location. Okay, 
um, because my lightest football player will be 180 pounds heavier and my heaviest football player will be 180 pounds heavier. My range is not really changing. My spread is not changing. Then this gives me my new five number summary. So all these numbers in the five number summary and the mean go up by 180, but my spread doesn't change. Now I'm going to the moon and I'm multiplying by 0.165. So I'm going to multiply all measures. The only things that wouldn't get affected is if I was talking about z-scores or percentiles. So my new five number summary, I just multiply everything up here by 0.165 and you can roughly get these numbers, which is it's kind of like dividing by six, so you can see the correspondence there. Then my standard deviation also becomes smaller. If I divide 35 by roughly six, I guess that makes about, that's about right. So these are my new measures after they're on the moon, if I were to do the statistics of a football team on the moon, which is kind of a crazy example. All right, now last but not least, let's take a look at z-scores. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate the z-score. Remember, it's that value minus my mean divided by the standard deviation. So I'll fill in these two that we're missing. And right below it, you're going to see some dot plots. Here's the original weight, and here is the z-scores of each single weight. So what I did is I actually plotted literally each one of these points. What do you notice? Well, the shape is the same. You can argue the scale is different but the shape's the same, all right? And here's a really cool thing. If you look at um, the mean and the standard deviation for a z-score, well, what would the mean uh, z-score for the mean be? Well, it's gonna be mean minus mean, which tends to be zero. So the mean for z-scores is always zero, okay? Now you could say, well, the standard deviation is not gonna work out that well. Well, standard deviation is a measure of spread, so subtracting this mean doesn't really affect it, okay? So it's just going to be standard deviation divided by standard deviation, which is 1. So the mean of z-scores is always 0, which kind of makes sense because that's distance from z-score. And our standard deviation measure is always 1. We're either 1 standard deviation away or 2 or 3. And this is going to come in really handy when we look at the normal distribution, which is really a rather special distribution in our next lesson.